For the Boston Red Sox, each month has produced a player to lead the team offensively. In April, Mo Vaughn started the charge with a 4-12 average. In May, Billy Hatcher, his bat led the way. In June, Mike Greenwell drove in 17 runs. And last month, three players were hot, but no one louder than Mo. For the Red Sox, who's next? The first of our doubleheader ESPN's Friday Night Baseball from Tiger Stadium in Detroit, the Boston Red Sox and the Detroit Tigers open up the weekend series. On June 21st, the Detroit Tigers were number one in the American League East. Boston 13 games out. Since then, these teams have gone in reverse. Boston is now just one behind Toronto tied with the Yankees. But look at Detroit, eight and a half games behind. Hello, everybody. Gary Thorne and welcome. Tiger Stadium tonight. Some rain this afternoon. It is letting up. This game's going to get started about quarter of the hour. And that's good news for the Red Sox, who are absolutely red hot. When you're running like that, you don't want it to stop. They are pitching. They are hitting. They are doing everything right right now and a real shot at first place. Mike Martinez for the Boston Red Sox. It's been somebody new every night, and it's been everybody. Well, you know, Gary, they've had a lot of confidence. They've got some veteran players like Andre Dawson they brought in here. And it was a situation early on. We all knew they could pitch. They've got the best pitching staff in the league. But they weren't hitting the ball. But all along, the veterans said, hey, fellas, keep plugging away. The hitting will come around. And it sure has right now. And it's gone with that pitching, and it has them just one game out. Detroit Tigers, what a spin they are in right now. We looked at this team at the first of the year and all the home runs, and we said, hey, maybe, maybe they'll beat the odds, and hitting actually will be enough. But well the pitching caught up to him they got off to a great start with the bats and on the mound they scored a lot of runs and they were getting great starting pitching you can see in April under four in the ERA but then the ERA started to creep up and the run production started to slack off this ball club hits but they simply don't hit enough to make over for a questionable starting staff. Also, they're the worst club in the league defensively, and they don't make a lot of plays that go unnoticed that they should make. And, Buck, it is important tonight for the Red Sox the rain stop because when you're red hot like this team is, they don't want anything to break the spell. No, not at all. And, you know, they've got a very important time right now. They play the Tigers, then they go home to Fenway to play. National League President Bill White, Bob Scanlon suspended for seven games and fined. Bloss Minor also suspended for seven games and fined. Al Martin also suspended for seven games. Sean Bosby suspended for three games and fined. All four players have appealed their suspensions and fines. Therefore, they are eligible to play pending the hearing of their appeals. And the Pirates have already been rained out tonight with the New York Mets. They'll make that up as part of a doubleheader on Saturday. Some of the activity we'll be keeping an eye on in the American League. Some interesting matchups tonight as the pennant races heat up. And we will be keeping an eye on the Brewers and Blue Jays as John Olerud, his average has dipped below 400, hitting 394. He does have 42 doubles, which of course leads the American League and is already a team record. The Yankees and Twins will be uh, watching this game. We understand, too, Don Mattingly leading the Yankee charge, but Peter Gammons tells us that New York is talking to the Twins about acquiring Shane Mack, who is scheduled as the Twins' uh, leadoff man in the lineup uh, tonight. And the Indians and Orioles, unsung hero Mark McLemore, has the O's in the AL East race, batting 400 in his last five games. The Orioles trailing the division-leading Blue Jays by three games. Those are some of the games we'll be watching in the American League, in the National League. Some games we'll be keeping an eye on as the San Francisco Giants and the Philadelphia Phillies try to add to their leads. The Phillies are in Miami facing the Marlins. Lenny Dykstra, the first player to score over 100 runs this season, leading the National League in that department as the Phillies Open with a six and a half game lead tonight over the Cardinals. And the Astros will be facing the Giants. Barry Bonds tied for second in the league in batting. He leads the National League in home runs and runs batted in. Eight and a half game lead for the Giants over the Braves as Barry Bonds has a chance at a possible triple crown. Couple of other notes David Wells of the Tigers will miss his scheduled start on Saturday because of elbow problems. And as we mentioned, uh, Shane Mack with the uh, 
Minnesota Twins possibly will be a member of the New York Yankees. As Peter Gammons tells us, they are discussing a trade. As we have some weather problems at Tiger Stadium between the Red Sox, why don't we go to the Milwaukee Brewers and the Toronto Blue Jays. We'll take you there live and enjoy the action as Pat Listash is on base. Darryl. He fights it off, but all they can do is flare it to the first baseman, and Scotty Fletcher's an easy mark for the double play. Well, Gullickson gets a real break there. You get the leadoff man off the base pass, and you get the red hot Billy Hatcher out of there. Mike Greenwell. Look how everybody's trying to get these infielders moved in. All three of the Red Sox hitters have squared around in their time at bat here in the first inning. Greenwell does at that time. Well, if you can get the ball on the grass area around home plate, it could be a difficult play because it has been raining and it is wet. It'll be a tough play for any defender to pick it up and make a good throw. Alex in the overhand goes the other way to Dan Gladden. He'll not have a play on this. And there's that wet field. Down he goes. It'll be a stand-up double. Boy, you can hurt yourself that way. He went over to get it and almost broke himself in two. 25 doubles on the season for Greenwell. When you're facing Bill Gullickson, you want to make sure you stay back and you don't get too over anxious. Jump out there at him. Greenwell goes down the left field line. Look at Gladden overran the ball when he tried to put the brakes on. He lost his footing. I don't think that would have had any effect on his ability to go to second anyway. I think that was a straight double all the way. So Greenwell is on with the two bagger. And the Red Sox with two down. He was Andre Dawson, the designated hitter. Had a chance to bring one home here early on if he can get the base hit. Not hold the runner tight at second. Off speed pitch to Dawson. Misses inside. Dawson, five for 22 with a home run in his lifetime off Bill Gullickson. They faced each other a number of times. And during this Red Sox streak we were talking about in the open, you'll see numbers like this popping up. Andre Dawson, one of them, has just been on an absolute tear. Breaking balls in at the knees. Gary Andre Dawson came out of spring training with knee problems. He had to spend some time on a disabled list. He's just now starting to get confidence that he has a solid foundation underneath him that he can really drive off those knees. You have to be pretty certain that you're going to have something to hold you up when you're to play before you can really have a good swing. Well, he was really hurting those knees first half of the season. Broken back ground ball to short. Alan Trammell over to Cecil Fielder and that'll do it. So the Red Sox get a couple of hits in the inning but end up leaving one on the double play a big part of that inning. Now the Detroit Tigers and we will get a look at the Rocket who's going after his 2000 strikeout tonight. Boston with a couple of hits and one left on in scoring position and the first Tigers will be coming up against Roger Clemens and there is Sparky the Dean of managers in the American League. He and Tommy Lasorda his club has gone just the other way. 18 games over 500 June 20. Now they are eight games under, and it is real crunch time for Sparky Anderson. For the Detroit Tigers against Roger Clemens and the Red Sox, Dan Gladden leads it off. He'll be in left field. Sweet Lou Whitaker at second base, the left-handed hitter. Real tough against this starter. Travis Fryman at third base, bats third. Cecil Fielder in the cleanup spot at first. Mickey Tettelin, the switch hitters in right field for this game. Kirk Gibson's back out there in center field behind Tettelin. Alan Trammell, another fine hitter against Roger Clemens at shortstop. Scott Livingstone, the designated hitter, batting eighth and doing the catching and batting ninth, Chad Pruder. Roger Clemens makes his 20th start of the year. He's 9-7. and seven. The ERA somewhat inflated, but remember, Roger Clemens spent 15 days on a disabled list battling a groin injury. When he went on the list, it was June 21st. Same time they got hot. 121 strikeouts, good ratio to walks, innings pitched. Thing about Roger Clemens, he went on the disabled list, and everybody on the team said, okay, now we got to pick up the slack. We don't have the big horse to carry us any longer. Aaron Seeley came up and did an outstanding job filling in for him, and since then they've carried the momentum right on through to today. And now Clemens is in position to really be the leader down the stretch the last two months. Got everybody else going, and now they got him too. Defensively for the White Red Sox, excuse me, it's Greenwell Hatcher and Bob Zupsik in the outfield. All star Scott Cooper at third base, John Valentin the shortstop, Scotty Fletcher. Very, very gutty second baseman. He hangs in there real tough. He has been the inspirational leader on the infield. Mo Vaughn's played outstanding defensively at first base, and the veteran Bob Melvin gets a start tonight behind the plate. 
And the Rocket is ready to go against the Detroit Tigers. Has not pitched against them this season. He is 10 and 7 in his career and misses inside to Dan Gladden, the leadoff hitter. Here at Tiger Stadium, last start was a shutout on September 10 of 91, the last time he started here against the Detroit Tigers. He is 3 and 4 career wise here at Tiger Stadium. Rocket has been a ground ball pitcher throughout most of his career. 1,994 strikeouts. On the verge of a magic number tonight that he may very well reach with six more strikeouts. It'll be 2,000. He is averaging 8.19 strikeouts per nine inning this season's second best. So we may see a milestone, yet another, to be reached by Clemens here tonight. Dan Gladden waiting. And the strike's in on the inside corner. Three balls and one strike. One thing Clemens has to do in my mind is establish that he can spot the fastball inside. That keeps the outside protected for that breaking pitch. And he fights his way back to a full count. Gladden thought he had the free pass, took off. Tim Welke said no. Welke's behind the plate. Drew Coble at first. Derwood Merrill at second base and John Hirschbeck is the umpire at third for this series. Red Sox lead in the season series four games to two against Detroit but this has been a tough ballpark for them to play in. Missed up high with it. Gladden is on and Clemens thought he had that one in the strike zone. Lead off walk Clemens is averaging two and a half walks for nine innings so he's kept that outstanding ratio up there. Looks like he wants the ah stick here. Getting a little mud in the cleats on the mound. Well, that fastball's high. He fell behind three and zero, made a couple of pitches, to even to run the count to three and two, but finally walked it. He's having some trouble with his footing right now. He's got that surface out on the mound, and his cleats have kind of gummed up with mud. Called for the tongue depressor to get better grip on the mound out there. Now Lou Whitaker. This is one of the toughest three hitters against Roger Clemens in his entire career. Ironically. One of the other two is also on this team. Alan Trammell and Lou Whitaker. Trammell's a 353 career average against Clemens. Lou Whitaker, a 345 lifetime hitter. Both have two home runs up. Shows a little bunt, but not very much. Takes the pitch ball one. Gary, they're both very good fastball hitters. Clemens, of course, has the outstanding fastball. Both Whitaker and Trammell. Throughout their career, love to face the hard ball throwers. They like the challenge and they like that heat. Runner at first, Glad. However, there's one other hitter in the American League who gives Clemens more trouble than either of those two, and that is Ken Griffey Jr. Another pretty good fastball. Hitter. Over 400 against Roger Clemens, 11 for 27 coming into this season. That's something you can take home and hang up. Whitaker taps that one to first. Vaughn, one play, and that's to Whitaker. Puts the tag on him. So Gladden moves down to second base. Whitaker retired. One down. Opposition hitting 230 against Clemens. That is seventh best. His ERA at 3.32 is 10th in the league. Wins just nine and seven. That's a bit ironic at this point of the season. Part of that, as Buck mentions, because of problems he's had with that groin that kept him up. Travis Fryman now, three game hit streak for Fryman. He's got an RBI chance right here. Taken down low for a ball. That's hot. You know, here's a young hitter that is really advanced. As far as his understanding, what he has to do to be successful in the big leagues. He makes adjustments all the time, really studies patterns and pitchers. Nice ball in there. He's a better low ball hitter than a high ball hitter. Clemens has the fastball. There you see 95 miles an hour. He can go upstairs. You know, an awful lot of pitchers can't pitch up. But Clemens can really live upstairs. Ryman 338 with runners in scoring position. He's been a good clutch hitter and he's got one at second in Dan Gladden. 
Great stop made by Belvin. Sparky Anderson high on him from day one. So this is the star of the future right here. Well, he's always been an impressive hitter. Sparky Anderson feels that Fryman is going to be too big to play shortstop all the time. So he's already made the transition over to third base and he wants him to forget about shortstop. Would he have moved to Kel? <laughs> Two one delivery breaking ball and a good one. He probably would have had a good explanation why he wanted yeah, to. <laughs> absolutely. And Roger Clemens throws that off speed curveball and gets it in the strike zone. Hitters are absolutely hogtied. When you're seeing a 95 mile an hour fastball and then like an 85 mile an hour or less breaking ball from Clemens, looks like it's on a spring, just barely coming up there. Two two Gladden off second base. This foul. And then he comes back with a fastball on your hands, and you can't get the big part of the bat on the ball. A lot of people think of Roger Clemens as being just a flamethrower. He's blessed with that 95 mile an hour fastball. Let me tell you something. He understands what it is to pitch. He knows he's got to locate in and out. He can throw that fork ball over, has good command of it. Some people on the Red Sox believe that he might rely a little bit too much on the fork ball. He doesn't use his fastball as much as he should, given that it's 95 and he has outstanding control with it. He's tried to cut down actually on strikeouts at one point in the early in the season. He wanted to save his arm a little bit, try and get the guys to hit it. Foul tip from the off speed pitch. Fourth ball. Count stays at two balls and two strikes. Five and four at home, four and three on the road for Roger Clemens this season. I saw that opposition, the numbers against him on the road, and the opposing teams hitting only 212 in road games. Very little difference though. That power pitcher like Roger Clemens the numbers stay about the same He's only given up nine home runs all year five at Fenway and four on the road tonight the question is will it be the Tigers home run power or Clemens strikeout power now the old adage is good pitching always shuts down good hitting Ryman battling here one out Gladden on at second base bottom of the first two two delivery again that was close. Bobby Melvin wanted that pitch. The catcher thought it was over the corner. His shoulder was dipping down, but Fryman held off. And it just missed outside. Now you'll see power on power. 3 2 count. Fryman to second base. Scott Fletcher's got it. Moving over to third. Gladden. Now there are two down, and the fans move to the front of the seats for Cecil. Yeah, never know. The next swing of the bat may be the longest ball ever hit in the history of the game when this guy stands in. Well, if these two ever catch up to one another, you might get that. Cecil hasn't made too much contact against Roger Clemens. One for 21. Roger Clemens has struck him out 11 times and gets that call on the outside corner. Cecil turned to Tim Welka, the umpire. Couldn't believe he called that a strike. So listen, I can't hit this guy anyway. He didn't need any help. Don't be doing that to me. Two down, Gladden at third. No score. The Tigers right now, not only that pitching not coming, but they're just not hitting up and down this lineup. Cecil Fielder's four for 24, Petalins three for 19, Gladden's done four for 16. Fouls that one upstairs. Clemens is ahead on the count of ball, two strikes. All the strikeouts are still there. Cecil Fielder's got 87, but Rob Deere's well ahead of him with 111, and Mickey Tettleton's got 101. So these guys are consistent to what they have been in the past couple of seasons. It's an all or nothing ball club. You get the long ball and three run homers, or you get a lot of K's. One, two delivery. Tried to get him to chase. Two balls, two strikes. Cecil Fielder's very, very good down and out over the plate. I think that comes from his playing in Japan where they didn't give him an awful lot of good pitches. He had to expand his strike zone. So he's got excellent coverage 
away from it. 17 home runs here at home. Cecil reaches and just stays alive. That one, he reached so far for it, he lost the bat as he followed through on the swing. Down stays two and two. So much of hitting is confidence. And you can see Cecil Fielder's approach at the plate. He doesn't feel good against Roger Clemens. He hasn't had any success at all against Roger Clemens, and it's playing on his mind right now. He's really jumpy. As Clemens starts his delivery, Cecil's ready to go out there and try to hit it before it gets to the plate. 2 2 delivery again. I thought he might throw him one of those off speed breaking balls, and Cecil might corkscrew himself right into the earth at Tiger Stadium. If he does, he'll probably step on the grass in front of home plate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Two down, three two of the count, Gladden at third. Reached for it to right. Bob Zupsik. That'll take care of that. So the leadoff walk to Gladden, but he is stranded at third. They've completed one here at Tiger Stadium, no score. Miller Genuine Draft, that's MGD, presents this date in baseball, August 6th, 1953. Ted Williams returned to the Red Sox from Korea and in 37 games hit 407, 13 homers and 34 runs batted in. Speaking of 400, John Olerud trying to get back to that. Jamie Navarro on strike three. Olerud struck out three times last night, now batting 393, but the Jays lead in the second, two to one over the Brewers. You can see John Olerud close in on 400 against the Brewers, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Now let's get back to Gary and Buck at Tiger Stadium. Chris, thank you very much. He'll keep you posted on those other games in this great race in the American League East that's going on. No score here after one. It'll be Vaughn, Zupzik, and Cooper coming up for the Red Sox against Bill Gullickson. Two years in Japan. I was mentioning Japan. Gullickson went over and played a couple of very successful seasons over there. And back here and has been important in this Detroit staff, even though his ERA is up there. He's given them some innings, 107 coming into tonight's game. Mo Vaughn. Breaking ball, misses up high for a ball. Vaughn's putting up enormous numbers for the Boston Red Sox. Just a great season. Everything they wanted out of him. Home runs, RBIs, he's their leader. Leads and walks, leads and strikeouts. Big slugging percentage and on-base percentage to go with it. Among the top ten in both slugging and on-base percentage. And a big clutch hitter. He has really blossomed this season. Ellickson staying inside away from the power gets it in two balls one strike. You can see that he too is a hot hitter right now. He saw numbers for Andre Dawson. The thing about what Mo Vaughn has done this year I think has a lot to do with Mike Eastler becoming a hitting instructor as far as a, a plan. Eastler gave him a plan early in spring training to use the whole field and get away from thinking about Pulling the ball all the time. I think hitting with men in base is a mental thing. You go up there with confidence thinking that you can drive the run in. And then it becomes a challenge and you relish those opportunities. Stays inside. This one he gets on the corner. And the count is full. Three balls and two strikes. It's a dangerous matchup for Gullickson. Gullickson led the majors. 35 home runs off Gullickson last year. And is a left-handed home run hitter at Tiger Stadium, where it's 325 down the right field line. Wow, tipped, held on to, and that'll take him out as Cruder. Good job. Strikeout picked up by Gullickson, one away here in the second. We have opposites in this game, but we talked about all the strikeouts. Roger Clemens, the other side of the coin is Gullickson, who last season was right down at the bottom of the pile in strikeouts. Well, if you can't blow them away with heat like Roger Clemens, you have to mess up their timing like Bill Gullickson, and he goes back and forth on all of his pitches. Take a little off, put a little on. Bob Zupsik, right fielder for the Red Sox. Last season, Gullickson struck out 2.6 for nine, the lowest in the major leagues. He comes into this game with 39 strikeouts in the 92 innings he's worked. Breaking ball is in, good curve ball. Quickly ahead on Zupsik, two strikes. Zupsik, one of the young players for the Red Sox, is getting playing time and 
they don't have any platoon situation, but depending on who they're playing, right or left-handed, they move some people around in the outfield, which Hobson has that ability to do that. He's got people like Carlos Quintana. Fouled back. Luis Rivera has been playing in and out. Yvonne Calderon is back off the DL. When all is said and done, the bench the Red Sox end up with on any given day is pretty darn good. And yeah, they've got a lot of veteran hitters down there, and they've got guys that can come off the bench. They don't have to be playing all the time. Ernest Riles is another veteran bench player. Come in and have some good games for you with a bat. You know, throughout that skid just before the turnaround in late June, Butch Hobson kept saying, listen, fellas, we'll get this thing turned around. He really maintained a real positive attitude, which was quite remarkable. Zupzik outside of first base. Critter coming over. He had enough room. Let's check in with Chris Myers. All right, Gary. Orioles going for their fifth straight. Indians at Baltimore, bottom of the second. David Segui off Jeff Mutis, his eighth home run of the year. Jack Boyd doubled in. Tim Hewitt also in the inning. So it's 2 nothing. goes. Rick Sutcliffe has that lead. They're now in the third. Let's go back to Tiger Stadium. Orioles very much in it here as they battle at the top here with the Red Sox, Yankees, Baltimore Orioles, Detroit Tigers trying to stay close. They've got to put some wins together. Scott Cooper with two down and nobody on. The Red Sox all star. Putting up some very impressive numbers at third base. Baseball America selected as the best arms in the infield the two third basemen who are here. Scott Cooper and Travis Fryman is having the strongest infield arms in the American League. They are both here, both at third base. That actually might have hurt Fryman at shortstop because he would lay back on a lot of balls knowing that he had that good arm and he would just sit back there. As a result, he got a lot of tricky hops. Two strike pitches low, ball and two strikes. Cooper has done well against Gullickson, six for 11 with a home run. On him. In fact, most of the guys in the Red Sox lineup have hit Gullickson up hard, both the veterans and the youngsters. One, two, delivery. Gullickson with a palm ball that time. Missed inside. He threw that one way back there in the back of his hand. Two balls, two strikes. Gullickson, a distinct fly ball pitcher. One of the reasons all those home runs come off in pitching here in Tiger Stadium. He doesn't get a lot of ground balls. That one misses inside, and the count's full. Yeah, throw a little cut fastball in on left handers from time to time and try to get that curveball over to it. It's only been the last year or so that he started to sink the ball away from him. But he doesn't use that an awful lot. 3 2, Cooper stays alive. American League Eastern Division. It looks like it is really going to be a hush race and a lot of fun for everybody, including the players. But Toronto just cannot pull away. Boston, New York are really believing. Baltimore is. Detroit's wondering at this point in time, but they're all in it. Second time, Gullickson 3 2 to Cooper. The second time, he fouls it back. Think about the Tigers. If they get the same type of pitching they've had the last time around, they've gotten pretty good starting pitching the last time through the rotation. If the bats show up like they did early in the season, they could string together some pretty good games. But they have not hit lately. They haven't had any big clutch hitting. He got him. Red Sox having a hard time with the timing on Gullickson, and he's got a couple of strikeouts, about his average per game. Series having won two in a row. Detroit's coming off a two and five road trip. Frank Viola went back to Minnesota yesterday and pitched a great two to one win. The Red Sox winning a three game series there for the first time since 86. Red Sox are finally turning it on on the road, not just because of great pitching. Viola had that yesterday, but they're actually getting some hits. And on this road trip, you see what they have done two and one in Baltimore, two and one in Minnesota, three games here in Detroit. This comes after they had a seven and three road trip on the California coast. Their last road trip, pretty impressive numbers for them on the road. 
you can sense the confidence in their locker room too. Nobody's really out of their head with the bats, but they're confident. They believe they can win now, and they expect to win every night. They do. They really do. They can't wait to play. Mickey Tettelin will lead it off. Tettelin, Gibson, and Trammell in the Tiger half of the second inning. Clements averaging 92 miles an hour in the first inning. 11 strikes and 13 out of the strike zone. You'll want to cut those numbers down as far as the total is concerned. He's telling us a great story about the number 21 that he wears for the game today. This has been in his family forever. His grandfather, his father, others who have played sports in his family all wear 21, and he's collecting the number 21 of as many baseball players as he can and other great stars like Roberto Clemente. He's doing the pitchers. And those on the Red Sox have worn 21 and pitchers on other teams and then other baseball greats. And has quite a collection underway and people are finding out about it and start calling him and say hey we got a jersey available here or whatever. No coincidence that number 21 happens to be what he wears. Settle and thought about it good fastball. You know, you can see the pattern developing here where Bob Melvin behind the plate is working a lot of fastballs. Trying to get Clemens to go ahead and establish that early. Well, for the umpire has given him that high borderline strike so he can go ahead and test these hitters upstairs. And there's the fourth ball. And that's what that fastball does. Set him up. Settle in a strikeout victim. There's the first for Clemens tonight, number 1,995. When you put fastball on the hitter's mind, they know they have to be quick, and they're trying to get the head of the bat out. When that happens, they go after the fork ball. The fork ball is a pitch meant to be swung at. Hitters think it's the fastball. He has good arm action with that fork ball. Mickey Tettleton couldn't check his swing. That will bring up Kurt Gibson. Those are the numbers we were talking about with the Tigers on all or nothing offense. Gibson back out in center field, getting some playing time there. And it it's been a couple of seasons for him. Gibson has now played 13 times since the All-Star break in center field. He hadn't been used there regularly since 1990 with the Dodgers. Outside corner strike. See the other scores. Toronto still up in their game. Olerud, current average. Chicago trying to put some games up in that Western Division. Texas wasn't obliging. It was short. John Valentin, slow roller. Close. Gibson didn't even turn around. I don't think he thought he'd ever have another close play at first base on an infield ground ball, but that was. Well, one thing about Kirk Gibson, he always gives it everything he's got going down the line, and he made that pretty interesting at first base. Very slow infield here at Tiger Stadium, and Valentin had to charge hard, took it just barely on the skin part of this infield. Gibson's chugging down the line, and you can see Valentin takes an extra step before he unloads, and Gibson just by a half a step gets beat by the throw. Two down, and the base is empty, and here is Alan Trammell. Tiger shortstop and veteran, who he said put good numbers up, better than good, great numbers up. Gibson back, recuperating. Charge down to first. Maybe might have pulled the in there for a minute. Well, he's got a lot of things working on those legs. He's got ankles wrapped and shins wrapped and quads wrapped up. Fingers wrapped. <laughs> I asked him about it the other day, and he said, hey, it's nothing worth talking about. <laughs> well, I don't want to think about it any more than I have to. Trammell takes the inside corner, strike two and one. There are the career numbers for Alan Trammell. He has struck out only five times in 51 at bats against Roger Clemens and leads the Detroit Tigers against Clemens with 12 RBI. I still can't say that. I always like to use proper diction, but RBI instead of RBIs just doesn't ring. It's okay in baseball. You all right? Say, yeah, RBIs. It's going to be RBIs. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize to those offended by that, but. Dog's going to be on that point. 3 1 delivery towards second base. Scott Fletcher. And Roger Clemens has a 1 2 3 inning, a strikeout, and a couple of ground balls. 
No score from Tiger Stadium. Tiger Stadium downtown Detroit ESPN's Friday night baseball first half of our doubleheader Gary Thorne Buck Martinez you see the clouds that sent some rain to Detroit still up there but blue sky also on the other side of the stadium so not had any rain since we started Boston Red Sox in their 31 and 9 run 31 and 9 are hitting 294 during that streak they have seven one run losses and one two run loss. That's eight of the nine losses during that time. Seven by one, one by two. It's almost unreal. Well, that shows the balance in their attack. Somebody can have an off night, and there's somebody there behind them to pick them up. Plus the confidence factor now. They're never out of any game. Bob Melvin is spelling Tony Pena with an afternoon game here tomorrow. Activated the end of July, the 31st. Started one of the games in Minnesota a couple of days ago. He had a pulled hamstring. 31st start overall this season. Melvin going after the breaking ball at Gullickson. One ball, two strikes. There's Tony Pena. Night off. Probably thinking about tomorrow's start here. Still moves around, not as productive as he once was behind uh, at the plate with the bat. Still does a good job defensively. One two delivered. You know, the catchers that the Red Sox use, he still has the great numbers defensively. Want to remind you that earlier today, ESPN presented the opening round coverage of the Cadillac Senior PGA Tour, the Bank of Boston Senior Classic. Our live coverage will continue tomorrow and Sunday through the first round. Bentley, Acock, and Murphy right there. There are six tied at four under. That ball hit the right center field, but not particularly deep. Gibson gives way to Tuttleman. That can get dangerous out there. Melvin's retired, one away. We'll have our golf coverage coming your way tomorrow and Sunday at 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific in Concord, Mass. The fly balls can be an experience when the outfield is Gibson and Tuttleton in center and right. you got to make sure you communicate. You don't want any big crashes out there. Because <laughs> they would be big crashes. John Valentin. So impressive in spring training for the Red Sox a season ago. Everybody said this guy is going to play for the Red Sox. Last year he started at the minors, worked his way up this year at the shortstop position. Ellickson breaking ball, again missing up high. One ball and one strike. As a result, Tim Nearing, who the Red Sox had penciled in a couple seasons ago, can't get back from Triple-A baseball. Second base. Since retired two down. Bill Whitaker and Alan Trammell still making a very solid contribution up the middle defensively and with the bat. Nobody expected Alan Trammell to be the everyday shortstop here in the second half of the season this year. But he's played very well. Wouldn't be Tiger baseball without <laughs> Whitaker and Trammell. No score with the leadoff batter Scott Fletcher coming up. So once through the order, Dellickson has given up two hits. One of those a single to Fletcher that came in the first inning. Six hits in his last 14 at bats. Now. now you're seeing Bill Gullickson really fall into a groove. He's getting ahead with both his fastball and his breaking pitch. Looks like he's thinking a pitch or two ahead right now. But so much of that is rhythm and timing. First inning, he was all over the place. Walked the leadoff batter, got the little looping liner off the bat of Billy Hatcher for a double play. Then gave up a double to Greenwell, but now it looks as though he's found his release point. He had pretty good command of all of his pitches. 1977, Gullickson, the second pick in the country behind Harold Baines. Bow back. He has extended that career last season, led the Tigers in innings, starts, victories of 14. 
finished up miserably though he ended up going one and six over his last ten starts last season very disappointing finish for him but the Tigers were really struggling at the end of the year last year. Well I think he had something going on with both his knee and his shoulder at the time but wouldn't say anything kept on taking his normal turn into rotation. Finally he had to undergo surgery in January to repair both his knee and his shoulder. Two strike pitch Fletcher. Backed off the plate a little bit one ball two strikes. Isn't Five it, hits and 12 at bats for this guy against Gunnison now. Excuse me Gary isn't it interesting how Scotty Fletcher always shows up on good teams. We we're talking about that this morning but he's one of them and we were saying Billy Hatcher. Yeah. Same thing holds true for both those guys wherever they seem to go teams win. And I truly believe that's not just happens. Now it's not an accident. They both understand that it's an everyday commitment. You have to go out there and play a hundred percent every single day do the little things move the runners along take the same approach every day two two by Gullickson on the right field line pedal in the run in foul territory and there's lots of it here at Tiger Stadium yeah. that kid you now have a hero for the rest of his life he will tell the story of one night at Tiger Stadium Mickey Tuttle and gave him the ball right out of his glove Man, this is great. <laughs> and he saw me and ran all the way over. Saw me, came <laughs> right over to me. He knew who I was. That's all the ball player has to do. He just made a life. But you're the 2 2. Sweet lose, got it. And Gullickson and Clemens locked up in a good one here. One, two, three inning. That's seven in a row retired by Gullickson. The League East leading Phils in Miami against the Marlins. Chuck Carr, the ex-Cardinal, off another ex-card. Jose De Leon, a two-run homer. It's now three to nothing, Marlins. Pat Rapp with that lead. The Cards and the Cubs are just getting underway. Let's go back to Gary and Buck in Detroit. You gotta believe in those Phillies, though, don't you? No score here as we go to the bottom of the third, Tigers. Livingstone, Cruder, and Gladden coming up against Roger Clemens. Five more to that magic number. Roger Clemens would join a very select group. There are 42 right now with 2,000 strikeouts. Nolan Ryan leads both the active and all-time list with 5,700. Livingstone, who has a six-game hit streak, takes the pitch up by him. Ryan Carlton, Bly Levin, Seaver, and Sutton are the all-time strikeout leaders, the top five. Clemens now at the age of 31. Up there at 44. Surprised to see among the active players, Charlie Huff is among strikeout leaders. I guess that shouldn't have surprised me that knuckleball. He's uh, among the active pitchers, you see. Well, he is fourth. He's been pitching forever, too. That's true. <laughs> that helps. Two or three millenniums of pitching doesn't hurt. Dennis Eckersley, that's interesting. You remember that he won over 100 games as a starter. A lot of innings before he made the transition to the bullpen. Roger Clemens closing in on 2,000. Think about him striking out double figures all the time. Oops, oh, excuse me, base hit. Greenwell over to get it. Check swing. Livingstone has a seven game hit streak. There is the first hit and second base runner off Roger Clemens and two out of the three innings now the Tigers have had the leadoff man on. It's that high fastball Livingston you can see trying to hold his bat back on the way off of that but he dumps one in front of Greenwell. Now let's see how Sparky plays this. The number nine hitter Chad Kruder the catcher coming to the plate. Signs have been given here for Kruder. 226 right handed, 305 left handed. And as our erstwhile statisticians and assistants have so aptly pointed out, Tigers are the only team in the major leagues with two switch hitting catchers. He's one of them. 
The other one's in right field. Mickey Tuttle. Batting left-handed, that's his stronger side. That's what he's doing here against Cummins. You know, here's a guy that really got lost in the Texas Rangers organization. Came up as a fine-looking young catching prospect. Never really developed. And it's interesting how both Chad Kruder and Mike Stanley of the Yankees came out of the Rangers farm system and this year are enjoying their finest seasons. I think Mike Stanley's enjoying his finest season. Well, I'm enjoying it. If he's not, he's having a whale of a year, isn't he? Wow. 19 home runs. Last week, I haven't checked it this week, but last week, if he'd had enough at bats, he would have had the second best batting average in the league to John Oldwood. Kruder. That one right down at the knees and maybe a little lower is behind on the count here. Two strikes. Roger Clemens has a chance to pick up 200 strikeouts again this season. He's on a pace right now for 203. If he gets it, he will establish a new American League record of eight consecutive seasons with 200 plus strikeouts. He tied Rube Waddell and Walter Johnson last year. The major league mark is held by Tom Seaver, who did it nine times. 200 plus strikeout years. But generally, if the Rocket realizes something like that is at hand, he just goes out and does it. Two strike count. Way outside with that one. One ball, two strikes. He just wanted Kruder to go after one there, and he wouldn't do it. You'd see Melvin had reminded Clemens that he's got to stay close, and Roger just tucked that left shoulder down as he was standing on the mound and said, Keep this front side closed. That'll get you back down into the strike zone. When you fly open on the front side your arm will drag and that'll leave everything up and away from the left hand. That one down and in fouled off. Good catch made in the upper deck. Even a great pitcher like Roger Clemens from time to time will have some mechanical problems on the mound and he's got to make some adjustments so when a catcher can pick up a minor flaw and tell him on one pitch and then he can get right back into the zone. Was a writer in Boston who caught that in the press box upstairs. Vaughn at first base. Stone back over. The other thing, Roger Clemens, he has led the league in earned run average now for three consecutive years. As we said, he is 10th coming into tonight's game. Clemens could win that one. He would set a new record in the league. Sandy Koufax was the last to do it. Kopax led it five years in a row, 62 to 66. Lefty Gomez had done it four times in a row in the American League from 29 to 32. Great off speed pitch to Kruder. Second strikeout for Clemens, one down. Clemens got the ball down in the strike zone here. You can see that's the split fingers pitch. Starts it off right at the knees and then. Tumbling action takes it down away from Chad Kruder. Boy, that's such a tough combination. You go upstairs with that high, hard fastball and then put that top of the strike zone in hitters' minds and then come with that split finger pitch. Leadoff batter Dan Gladden. The only walk given up by Roger Clemens. He picked it up. Livingstone still on at first base, who had the single. And Clemens falls behind 1-0. That is something he's doing in this game that's a bit unusual. He's falling behind the hitters. Yeah, he generally goes strike one. Or just about everybody. Here's another guy that's had a lot of success against Clemens. He got a hold of that one to left field. It is deep. Greenwell going back at the wall. Goodbye, home run. Number six for Dan Gladden. A two-run shot. His second career. Tenth home run surrendered by Roger Clemens this year, and it was a high fastball. Let's take a look at it. Gladden got it on the inner part of the plate. Looked like Melvin was set up outside. Look at Clemens' reaction. He knows that was a mistake and doesn't even want to look at it. 
Greenwell gets up on the wall, but it's well over the fence in left field. Two run homer for Dan Gladden. And the Tigers take a two to nothing lead against Clemens. Here is Lou Whitaker. Clemens has given up five to the left-handers and five to the right-handers. Tony Phillips gives him the high fist. Down low to Whitaker. Has been an awful lot to smile about around here with the Tigers lately. So being out in front of Roger Clemens brings a lot of smiles in that dugout. 22 RBIs on the season for Gladden. Outside to Whitaker. Three balls and no strikes. He does not have his good stuff right now in this game. No, and he doesn't look very comfortable either. Three and one. Mechanically, I believe he's really trying to find his good delivery. I mentioned earlier that he was trying to keep the front shoulder tucked a little bit longer. I think his mechanics have caused him to be somewhat wild here. Comes back, takes the count full, three balls and two strikes. Leadoff man Dan Gladden bringing home Livingstone with him on the home run. One down, bases empty, 3 2 to Whitaker. And he's on with the walk. Let's check in with Chris Myers. Budweiser takes us to Toronto. Brewers and Jays. John Olerud struck out the first time, but this time off Jamie Navarro singles in Alomar. Then Molitor scores Carter. It's 4-3 Jays. Olerud presently batting 394 as they play fourth inning. You'll be able to see John Olerud and the Jays on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball against the Brewers. Check it out, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Back to Detroit, Gary and Buck. 2 nothing lead here for the Tigers with Whitaker on at first base. And Travis Fryman who grounded out his first time up. Tigers as a team now have 125 home runs. They are third tied for second now at Texas. New York leads the league with 133 homers. It's away. That'll move the runner up. Melvin coming back to get it. Probably a pass ball. This is that little short wild pitch or pass ball. Let's take a look at it. It's actually in the dirt. Melvin gets a glove on it and he expects it to be right in front of him. Clemens will be charged with the wild pitch, but I think Bob Melvin would agree that that should have been caught. Took the short hop, though, so the wild pitch. Puts the runner down at second base for Travis Fryman. Still only one out here, and Fryman down to third. Cooper, nice stop. Runner coming. Thought about going after him. Almost throws it away. Good play by Vaughn. Lou Whitaker took off right where the baseball was hit, and Cooper wanted to go over and tag him, then thought better of it, and then almost threw it away. Lou Whitaker broke on the play, and he gets right into Cooper's vision as he's ready to unload. Goes to the backhand, looks up, and he sees Whitaker, and almost goes to tag him, and then thinks, oh, I better not. When he rushes the throw, it's in the dirt. Mo Vaughn does a good job of digging that ball out. I don't know if he had control of that thing. It looked like he yeah. might have been bobbling it up against his body, but he gets the call. I thought the same thing. I thought he kind of pinned it between his glove and his belly. Two down, Cecil Fielder, runner at third base. Light out to right his first time up. Take a look at Cooper's strong arm, but he throws it into the dirt. Watch move on. It's rattling around in there, but he established control. Clemens gets ahead of Cecil Fielder. Clemens has been behind now 10 of the 13 batters that he has faced on the first pitch. Talking about how unusual that is for Rocket. Fielder's had only four hits in his last 25 at bats. Clemens has got him to a two strike count. Just missed the outside corner. 
Russell Fielder trying to do what no one else has done, lead the league in RBIs four consecutive seasons. But he is trailing right now Frank Thomas coming into this game. Thomas with 91, Cecil Fielder has 90. One to the count. Clemens is determined to get Cecil Fielder to chase something out of, outside off the plate. 2-2 two, two to him. Check swing. He went around. He's going to be tagged by Melvin, and that will do it. Third strikeout for Clemens, but the two-run homer by Gladden has given the Tigers a 2-0 lead. Hatcher will be leading it off. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes presents the K-Factor and the active strikeout leaders in the game, of course. Nolan Ryan on top of the list, followed by Frank Tanana. Down around the bottom of that list, but moving on up, Roger Clemens of the Red Sox. You are seeing in action at Tiger Stadium where Gary Thorne and Buck Martinez call the action. Chris, thank you very much. And he has three for Clemens. K's in this game. He may make that magic mark at 2,000. Gullickson right now, though, no walks and a couple of strikeouts, has the lead to work with. And it will be uh, Hatcher, Greenwell, and uh, Dawson coming up in the fourth inning. 2-2-0 two, two and oh for Detroit, 0-2-0 oh, and oh for Boston. Your line over the first three. Billy Hatcher hit into a double play with Fletcher on and running on the pitch on a hit and run. Popped over to first base, Cecil Fielder, in the easy two in the first inning. Takes that for the strike. Hatcher hitting 536, two home runs and five RBIs against Detroit this year. He and Valentin have been the two best Red Sox hitters, average and RBI wise, against the Tigers. <laughs> Some of that sidearm bender misses. Gary, you mentioned the fact that Bill Bellingson is quite a bit different, obviously, because of the velocity, but same for Roger Clemens. They both have to find a good release point. We haven't seen Clemens get to that zone yet. Doesn't have a real good delivery going yet. Bill Gullickson looked like he was fighting in the first inning, but since then has really got into a mechanical groove where he's pretty confident he's going to make a good pitch with every offering. We're seeing the whole repertoire sideways, over the top, inside out, up down. There's the overhand foul back by Hatcher. You'll never get two pitches in the same spot from the same delivery from Bill Gullickson. It always makes you think. It takes a little off the breaking pitch, like a big sweeping breaking ball, and then give you that little darter. These guys can be even tougher than Roger Clemens, who generally yep. throws a lot of hard stuff. Two balls, two strikes on Hatcher. The overhand again popped up behind second base. Whitaker. He's got it. Hatcher's retired, one down here in the fourth. Big difference for Gullickson. If he doesn't have a good command, it could be a short night for him. Whereas Roger Clemens can get by without having good command because he throws so hard and can overpower hitters, even though he's not real sharp with his control. Gullickson in his two starts against Boston, won four to two here against Boston. Went a good seven and a third. A couple of runs on five hits in that game. Let's take a look at the baseball here. Mike Greenwell, I think, just trying to slow Gullickson down. And maybe he did see something. This from Welke's going to throw it out of the game. There was a big glob of mud on the side of that ball, and Greenwell saw it as Gullickson put it into his glove and quickly called timeout. Alexson would love to have thrown that up there. Nobody on. What the heck? He wasn't going to offer it to the umpire, was he? Greenwell, a double his first time up. He now leads the team with 25 two baggers. Obon, 24. Auto delivery. Two balls, no strikes. Ellison was beaten by Boston at Fenway on June 27. He went five and two-thirds in that one and gave up seven runs and 11 hits. So that's 
Mr. Buck is talking about. You have two different kind of appearances against the same team by Bellingson. This one he has been strong. 2 0 pitch. <laughs> Greenwell going. That plate just grow. Two balls, one strike. Good contact hitter. He struck out only 34 times while drawing 39 walks. Go along with an average that has been right around that 300 mark. Started the night at 297. Three balls, one strike on him here. Red Sox down the Tigers, the two to nothing lead, and Gladden's two run homer. Three one. That's a three one swing. Just got underneath of it. He had a good read on the velocity, but Bellingson threw it a bit higher than Greenwell really wanted it. Now watch him spot a pitch. He won't give him that same look with Dawson on deck. 3 2 came inside. Bellingson will take that. It's a hard hit foul ball, but he got it in on the hands. Didn't quite break the bat. It's pretty close. The 3 2 delivery again. Off Gullickson, right handers are hitting 265, left handers 320. He's given up 15 home runs this year. Goes outside on that pitch and fouled off the other one. Well, he's really working Greenwell over here. He threw him a little cut slider inside. Greenwell hooked it foul. Then he went to the outside part of the plate. Greenwell didn't have a very good swing at it. Veteran pitchers on the mound. They'll watch a hitter and see how he's hacking at different pitches in different locations and work off of that. Coming back inside. Ninth pitch to Greenwell. That's what he wanted. First base, Cecil Fielder. Called off. Whitaker moves over. And there are two down here in the fourth inning. Gullickson cruising along right now. Andre Dawson stepping up. Dawson. A red hot hitter getting it done for the Red Sox. We asked him how. I made the adjustment with the pitch, and I sort of have an idea of what they're trying to do to me now. And uh, uh, it's, it's still an adjustment. It's a daily adjustment uh, with the ballparks, uh, the different pitching that you're going to encounter. But uh, I've realized that you know I have to stay within myself, not try to force anything, and basically take what they give me. But I have a, a better overall idea of uh, you know, how they're trying to work me. Out. A good veteran hitter like Andre Dawson relies so much on his knowledge of pitchers and what they will do to him in particular counts coming to a new league like the American League for him this year. It's taken him a while to pick up on any kind of patterns. He also has to get used to the fact that he might see more breaking balls. You can see the adjustment since the All-Star break has allowed him to hit 100 points higher than he was before the All-Star break. Couple of that with the fact that he's stronger now, his knees are a little more sound. I think eventually, as the season goes on, Andre Dawson will hit even better because he will have a better knowledge of the outer half of the plate and can use the whole field. Then he'll hit 400. <laughs> Takes that one inside. Andre Dawson, a lot of great career numbers for him right now. He is 59th all time in hits. He's now 24th in homers, 408. And in RBIs, tied with Billy Williams at 31st and runs batted in. And virtually everything he does now, as far as picking up hits is concerned, adds to yet another total. Hall of Fame? He's got a shot. Outfield's always tough. Yep, real tough. Fouled right straight back. I mean right straight back. Two balls, two strikes. This is what Andre Dawson did in 1992 in the National League. You can see he utilized the whole field at 327 to right, 338 to left. That's a knowledge of the league and the pitchers. Good balance to tap. 2-2 delivery. Thought about it. Check it first. No. Ruth Colbert. 
Two down, bases empty. Detroit leading 2 0, and Dawson really having to battle Gullickson here, and vice versa. Three balls and two strikes. Last four outs, Lou Whitaker's been involved in them. Ground ball, line out, two pop outs to him. Not this time. On travel. Plenty of time to get him. And right now, Gullickson is red hot. He's retired the side in order. Texas to Minnesota, Yankees and Twins, fourth inning, Kevin Tapley and Deion James hitting over 500 in his last five games. Hits this one over the wall for his solo homer, his sixth of the year. One to nothing, New York, same inning after Tartable singled Paul O'Neill with a two-run homer, his 16th of the season. Three nothing, New York, Bob Wickman pitching for the Yankees as we head back to Detroit for the Red Sox and Tigers. Yankees show an awful lot of character after losing the first two games of that four game series with the Blue Jays bounced back to win the last two to split the series and now I've got to jump on the twins. How about the Yankees this is the old Yankees this is long ball Yankees. They are ahead of the Detroit Tigers they're ahead of everybody as far as home runs are concerned. Hundred and thirty five for them on the season now one hundred and twenty five for the second best Detroit Tigers and Texas Rangers. Roger Clemens to go here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Tuttle and Gibson and uh, Trammell. Clemens with two walks, three strikeouts. The Tigers picking up their two runs and a couple of hits in the third inning. The only two hits they have, they made them count. Outside corner strike to Tuttle, and it was a strikeout victim his first time up. During this Red Sox streak, 31 and 9, you'd expect this guy to probably lead the pitchers as far as wins are concerned. But as Buck said, he was on the DL when the whole thing started. Alan Seeley, 6 and 0 oh during this streak. Danny Darwin's 5 and 1. Dobson is 3 and 1. Viola's 3 and 1. Clemens and Paul Quantrill are 2 and 1 during the streak. Their starters have gone 21 and 5 during this run. And the starters set the whole tone for the ball game. Pitch you late to the game and get to that good bullpen, but it's a confidence thing and it's kind of a steamroll factor. One guy goes out there and has a good outing, and then the next guy does the same. Fletcher diving, could not get it. Hatcher pick up the ball that dies on that wet outfield grass, and Tendlin is on with a leadoff single. The Tigers keep putting the heat on, getting the leadoff man on now, three of the four innings. They're trying to gain ground against those teams in front of them. Toronto on top, Boston, New York one out, Baltimore three games behind. Still a long way to go, which makes this race even that much more fun because these teams are all going to play one another. Kerry Gibson grounded out his first time up. Gladden started the first inning out with a walk. Livingstone started the third with a single. Tettelin starts the fourth with a single. You give yourself a much better chance of scoring. In this game, when you get that leadoff man on base, but the chances are about 70% better than if you don't. All these delays, beach ball trouble in the outfield. That's why Clemens has to keep waiting here as they go up and pick him up. There's Scott Fletcher coming in from second base to. Talk to Clemens, and then after he did that, Clemens pointed to Valentin to say that he was going to be the guy that was covering. So maybe Fletcher was talking about what Clemens was going to do with Gibson in the box here. 36 year old Kurt Gibson. Oh, he drills that one to right center field. He got wood. It's 415 back there. Shoulder, Zupsik stops his pursuit as it lands several rows up into the upper deck and right center. 
415 to that part of the ballpark. The second two run homer in the game for the Tigers. The strike by Trammell. Kurt Gibson, 16 home runs now and 69 runs batted in. Where am I missing? 11 home runs and 43 RBIs. Get new glasses. A 4 0 lead for the Tigers. Boy, did Gibson, that was the old time kind of crank right there. Just outside with it. They're calling that 419 feet. It's been a struggle for Roger Clemens tonight. Just hasn't seemed to be comfortable from the first inning on. One ball, two strike pitch. He got him. Trammell becomes the fourth strikeout victim of Roger Clemens. First out here in the fourth inning. It had been the Red Sox who were used to getting the key hits here this season. They have the highest batting average as a team with runners in scoring position. But it's the Detroit Tigers here tonight who are getting it done. They get somebody on, and they're getting that two-run homer. Single his first time up and scored ahead of Gladden on the two-run homer Gladden hit. You know, there's been so much talk around Detroit and all around the American League that the Tigers were ready to pull their tents and pack it in for the year. Eight and a half back the start of action tonight. I never felt that way when I walked in the clubhouse today. Tigers still pretty upbeat saying hey we're struggling a bit right now. You know Sparky Anderson has been saying for the last couple of weeks well this club is not as good as Toronto and I don't know that we can catch Toronto but in a sense that the players are still out there thinking that they might put a charge on. Them. One to the count. Or whether Sparky Anderson has an ulterior motive to those comments. <laughs> They're just too blatantly anti Detroit Tigers to say your team is out of it. That's what he said. Toronto should win. Yeah. Let's be realistic. Well, you know, the Tigers, when they won in 87, everybody had written them off in 87, too, and they just kind of snuck in. Won three on the last weekend of the season against Toronto right here at Tigers Stadium. Kind of stole the division title that year. He was talking about that before the game <laughs> in the clubhouse. That's a pretty good shot. Livingstone right field. Zupsik back near the wall. Goodbye home run. Scott Livingstone gets his second home run of the season. Roger Clemens has given up three. Pitching is just like real estate. It's location, location, location. Clemens hasn't had his location tonight. Take a look at this. Look at Melvin's target. And that ball stays right down the middle of the plate. Livingstone gets out in front. It's been a frustrating night for Roger Clemens. Just the second home run of the season for Livingstone. Zupsik went back. He's gone. And Rich Gale, the pitching coach, is at the mound with Clemens. We will check here and try and find out if Roger Clemens has ever given up three home runs in a ball game before. He had given up only nine coming into this game. He has given up three, accounting for all of the Detroit Tiger runs, including two home runs in this inning. Gibson, Livingstone, and Gladden have homered, and Scott Bankhead is loosening. Four strikeouts, three homers. Very on Clemens like. We talked about who wins out, good pitching or powerful hitting. Tonight it seems to be powerful hitting as Clemens has really struggled with his command. He just hasn't had good command. 
Chad Kruder, the switch hitting catcher, takes it down low. One ball, one strike. Five nothing lead for Detroit. This is where it gets scary for the Tigers. Last year, Detroit lost 23 games where they had scored five or more runs. They have already gone over that this year. Which has Sparky Anderson just shaking his head. How do you keep blowing leads that in those games generally ends up being five runs? I mean, they generally have a five run lead in those games. Foul back by Kruder. One ball, two strikes. Well, the beginning of their skit started in Baltimore. And they were up over the Orioles seven to one with two outs and nobody on. And before they got out of the sixth inning, they were trailing. And that was the start of this skip. The Orioles pounded on them after two were out in the sixth. I don't remember the record, but Baltimore set or tied a record for runs scored with two out and nobody on in an inning in that game. That's a bummer for the Detroit Tigers. A bummer for Roger Clemens. 2 2 delivery. And he gets Kruder. So there is strikeout number five. 1,999. There's another good fork ball, but there haven't been that many of them tonight. Next one will be his 2,000. Two down and the base is empty here in the fourth inning. And the leadoff batter Dan Gladden who had the home run in the third is sixth of the year. A two run shot. The second time this year Clemens has allowed more than one home run in a game. We'll try and tag down some more meaningful numbers on the three and one ball game. One ball, one strike. Red Sox pitching staff overall, of course, number one. The American League, in fact, the only team with an ERA that is under four coming into this game. They have now given up 83 home runs on the season, which is tied for a third fewest by a staff in the league. Gladden towards second base, Scott Fletcher. And Gladden is retired, but another big inning here for the Detroit Tigers as they come away with two home runs, Gibsons and Livingstones, and lead at 5 0. Well, Mike Illich, the owner of the Detroit Tigers, can smile a 5 0 lead right now in this game for the Tigers. They play some exciting baseball for you. Yeah, we popped three out, and uh, I'm not used to this. You know, we've been in a tailspin, so this is, I'm going to enjoy it while I can. How are you enjoying this game? Hockey's where you've been, and now back in baseball here? Well, this is my old profession, so I'm really enjoying it. And, uh, it's, you know, it's. You work for an organization, all of a sudden you're lucky enough to own it. It's it's got to be a big throw. Mike, you've done a great job bringing back the excitement to Tiger Stadium with this ball club. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, we we want to make it fun and we want to make it uh, fan friendly, and uh, that's what we've tried to do. You've certainly done that. We'll let Mike be with us here as we take a look at Mo Vaughn leading it off for the Red Sox, who now find themselves down five nothing. He struck out his first time up. Bill Gullickson. He has struck out two and walked none, so he has not hurt himself in this game. And the Red Sox have left only one on. That was in the first inning. Red Sox have not had anyone on since then. Ten in a row have been retired by Gullickson, who has the Red Sox off stride. Mo Vaughn to second base. Lou Whitaker makes the play, and Vaughn is retired one away in the fifth. Mike, we wanted to ask you that the Baltimore sale to me was rather astounding. For what the, were you surprised at the 170 million price tag on that? Well, I knew it was going to be uh, higher, maybe 10 million, but I didn't expect it to go 25 million. And uh, you know, and uh, my wife uh, mentioned to me, she said, "Mike, uh, I was a little cynical maybe about purchasing the Tigers, but I think you did the right thing." <laughs> Boy, if that's the standard, you're all set. 
Here is Zupsik who popped out. Gullickson falls down. Uh, he's all right. He just tripped on the mound, I believe, for a moment. I thought his leg gave way, but it didn't. Now, Gary, I think both pitchers have had trouble with this mound tonight. They just haven't really seemed comfortable. They've got turfus on it. It didn't get wet naturally during the rain. They had it covered, but neither one of them has really looked like they've been totally comfortable on the mound tonight. He's using the ah stick in there, too. Do you sense you've got to the fan base back here that maybe the Tigers had lost over the last two or three seasons? Well, I don't think so, uh, Gary. Well, we're going to, you know, we're fighting for two million. We were one four last year. We got a shot at it. So. But, you know, sports are humbling, as you know. And uh, I think it's going to take a couple, three years before we get the base back if we are respectable on the field and we continue to, you know, try to make the uh, ballpark a place you want to come. Well, I was commenting today, and I mean, I'm not saying this because you're here, but this ballpark, one of the cleaner ballparks, I, I said that to Buck when we came in. I mean, you keep this a very presentable ballpark, which isn't easy to do with an old yard like Tiger Stadium. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that's maybe a little bit of the hockey background. I've got some of my hockey people I brought over here. <laughs> <laughs> Give us an update. We have status on what's happening as far as Tiger Stadium's concerned or where you are with that. Well, we. Uh, we had a lot of activity and uh, we brought a lot of uh, people together and we thought we had a deal where maybe well, Greenwell's I guess oh, you take over I think there. that's going to hang in fair territory I thought that might end up out of there gliding over to get it Zupcic retired all of a sudden I found out I was out of my league I said I'll go up here and I couldn't talk <laughs> that happens go ahead. for me from time to time on well, I was going to say, it was looking pretty good. Uh, we met with the governor and the mayor, and uh, we had 80 acres there that we were talking about uh, converting an entertainment and a sports complex together. It would have been the first in the country, and we're pretty excited about it. But there's a change of heart uh, by some key principles at the last moment, but we're going to keep trying. Okay. Two down bases empty. Gullickson cruising here. Cooper struck out his first time up. Off speed to right field. Going back, Tettle it at the wall. No room. Goodbye in the overhang. Scott Cooper, number eight on the season, and the Red Sox get on the board as we play long ball at Tiger Stadium. 5 1 Detroit. This is the difference in the Red Sox in the second half of the season. They've been able to come up with the long ball, and Scott Cooper got one about mid thigh high. Nicky Tettleton runs to the warning track, but all he can do is look up as it settles in the upper deck. They have found the range with the long ball in the second half. Sure have. Red Sox last on the list in homers before the All-Star break. They've really fired it up in that department now. And they're on the board against Gullickson, who has now given up 16 home runs on the season. Two down bases empty and Melvin up. Flied out to right field his first time up. As an owner, I got to ask you this one. We we're all worried and talking about it now. Is there going to be some job action before this season's over by the players? Uh, is there going to be a proposal from the owners? How do you think this is going to play out? Well, I know the owners are going to make every effort to uh, have a productive meeting here up here in Wisconsin shortly because uh, I think they're all very, very aware that we have to do something, and I think there will be some movement. Well, you're meeting next week in uh, Lake Geneva, I believe, for the owners meeting and try to resolve what you can offer to the players, I guess. Hopefully it'll all work out for baseball. Mike Ellis, congratulations for the work here, huh? And thanks for coming by to see well, us. Thank you. I enjoyed it very much. Nice seeing you. Mike Ellis of the Detroit Tigers. Roger Clemens looking to be the 43rd player in Major League history. To reach 2,000 strikeouts, he has picked up five of them in this game. He's gotten them on the check swing. He's gotten them with the split fingered pitch. Cecil Fielder, who just couldn't lay off that one. He got Tettelin on one going around. That was the one that brought him up to within one, the strikeout against Chad Cruder. Now he goes to the fifth inning. Whitaker, Fryman, and Cecil Fielder coming up. He has given up three home runs tonight, third time in his career that has happened. The last time was against Toronto in June of 92, when he gave up three against the Blue Jays. And we're having the home runs fly out of Tiger Stadium, and that's not unusual. 
Lou Whitaker. 0 for 1 and a walk. Second among the top 10 hitters in the league. Much of this season. 301 average right now is not enough to get him there. Six points. 16 point shy of where he needs to be to get to the top 10. One one delivery. Fouls that one off into the mitt. One ball, two strikes. Clemens has just been inconsistent. He'll throw one real good split finger pitch, and then the next one will stay in the strike zone. And he'll try to make a good pitch with his fastball and it'll drift over the heart of the plate. He'll pay for that dearly in this ballpark. There were 181 home runs hit here last season, the most home runs in any ballpark in the American League. Tiger Stadium. Famous for those kind of ball games. That's why the Tigers have built this kind of team around it in part. There have now been 138 home runs hit in this ballpark this season. Whitaker fouls it off the other way. Two balls, two strikes. Patrick Clemens is working on an extra day's rest this time out. And sometimes when you're a regular four days rest and pitch on the fifth day guy, it can disrupt your timing somewhat. And another good splitter just misses. Clemens threw 138 pitches last time out. An opportunity to bump him back a day, and they took that. Last start, he lost four to nothing to Ben McDonald in the Baltimore Orioles. He was having much the same kind of problems he's having tonight. Three two, and Whitaker is on again. Three walks given up by Clemens in the game. Two of them have been to Whitaker, and now four out of the five innings, they've gotten the leadoff man on, and that may be it for Roger Clemens. Butch Hobson is on his way out to the mound. It's the unlike Clemens night. The three home runs is one thing. He's been behind about 80% of the hitters here in the first five innings. The leadoff, well, all the men, he's gotten behind them with that first pitch. He's getting the leadoff man on base in four out of five innings and he's thrown 92 pitches already, 53 strikes and 39 balls. That's not Roger Clemens. He is done for the night. And Scott Bankhead is coming on in relief. Roger Clemens gone and a little used Scott Bankhead on in long relief. They signed Scott Bankhead as a free agent. He pitched last year in Cincinnati had a fine season going 10 and 4 working out of their bullpen. This year there have been some guys ahead of him pitched a little more effectively. Bankhead just hasn't had to work. His numbers are pretty decent. 37 hits in 41 innings. The former first round draft pick of the Kansas City Royals. His job here is to hold those Tigers. Run around at first base. Whitaker, the responsibility of Clemens. Prime and 0 for 2 stands in. Clemens goes four plus innings, five hits, three walks, and five strikeouts. So he leaves the game 1,999 strikeouts. But he gave up three home runs, accounting for all five runs. Two run homer to Gladden, two run homer to Gibson, and the solo shot by Scott Livingston. Now Travis Fryman has got a three game hit streak. Try and keep it going here and get the Tigers into a big inning. against Bankhead hitting 224 the left handers 277 he has given up six home runs all appearances from the bullpen 
been a starter earlier in his career, but he's made the adjustment very well going down into the bullpen. Pitch parts of five season with the Mariners. Not very deep behind second base. Fletcher is there. Fryman is retired. One away. I want to remind you, Sunday Night Baseball and ESPN will feature the Milwaukee Brewers and the Toronto Blue Jays, the veteran Robin Yelp, and the young man trying for that 400 mark, John Olerud. Ricky Henderson, of course, has now joined the Blue Jays. Can they gain ground? Can they make that big run everybody's been waiting on? Well, we'll see. Sunday night, right here on ESPN. 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific. Those are the standings with Toronto right now on top. Boston, New York, only one out. Orioles three and the Tigers try to gain some ground here tonight or at least not lose anymore. Cecil Fielder bounced. Melvin makes the stop. Fielder's gone 0 for 2 in this game. Now here's one guy that's really thrilled Roger Clemens is gone. Cecil. Doesn't have any luck at all against Roger Clemens, and now he's got to deal with Scott Bankhead. Bankhead is basically a four-pitch pitcher, fastball, curveball, slide, and a changeup. A very good breaking ball, and that was one right there. Cecily completed the swing before the ball got to the plate on that one on Bankhead. Great fans. Got a lot to cheer about here tonight. And they're keeping it up. 5-1 lead for the Tigers. Whitaker held it first. Back up onto the roof of Tiger Stadium. One ball, two strike count on Cecil Fielder. Great to have you with us. First of our doubleheader tonight here on ESPN's Friday Night Baseball at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. Gary Thorne and Buck Martinez with the Detroit Tigers. Using the long ball here at home tonight to build that 5-1 lead. Coming off a 2-5 road trip. They want to make some hay here at home. They are 29 and 25 at home, 25 and 30 on the road. Red Sox are trying to keep their good road numbers up here over the last month. Bank it. Fielder's got a base hit right through the hole. They were playing him to pull all the way. Bobbled by Zutzik, but he kept it in front of him. And Whitaker stops at second base. Well, Cecil Fielder is on. Two on, one out in the fifth. Well, Cecil's had a tough night at the plate, so he gives in the bank and just takes the single through the right side of the infield. The pass ball down and away from him, and all he was trying to do was have a good at bat, make good contact, and he lines a single in the right. Now it's Mickey Tuttleton's chance. Dangerous situation for Bankhead. We said the left handers, the book works against him. Left handers do much better against him than right handers. This guy, of course, can drive the baseball. Which Hobson, his team in trouble here at Tiger Stadium, down 5 1. And his ace, Roger Clemens, out of there. Fouled it off. Strike one. Took that big cut. Settle in this season, 294 with runners in scoring position. He has been a, a very good punch hitter on this Detroit team. He has only had one hit against Bankhead. One for 15. Boy, he doesn't like to see Boston come to town, does he? <laughs> he hasn't found anybody yet, but he likes to hit again. He was 5 for 25 against Clemens, 1 for 15 against Bankhead. Takes the strike and he's behind on the count 0 and 2. Mickey Tettleton is a poor hitter, but he likes the ball out away from him. He'll stride toward the plate and he can hook that ball on the outer half of the plate into the seats in right. You've got to pound him inside to keep him honest, keep him off of that outside corner. Here's that short porch. 0 2 delivery. Tettleton toward second base. Scott Fletcher. Javon Valentin, 
Not in time. Holding up at third is Whitaker. Cecil Fielder taken out at second base. Whitaker third with two down. Settleman safe at first. That play just took an awful long time to develop. Slow infield grass really ate up that ball and never got to Scotty Fletcher very quickly at all. And all they could get was the force out of second. Runners at first and third and two down in the fifth. Jerry Gibson cranked one 419 into the upper deck right center field off Roger Clemens in the fourth inning. 11 home runs on the season now for him, even though I tried to give him more. Bankhead trying to get out of the inning. Whitaker at third, the responsibility of Clemens. Tuttle in at first, Bankhead's runner. something off and turn it over. Good movement down and away from Gibson. They went back to back changeups. You can see why he's mixing it up to Gibson. Two home runs, five RBIs, just 12 at bats. Two hundred and twenty one career home runs now for Gibson. Bankhead again same pitch a little harder. Turned it over down and away. One ball two strike count. Melvin going through the signs in front of home plate for the infield here. Was he signaling the pitch that time? No. What he was doing was signaling coverage if Tettleton decides to take off here and they try to steal a run with two outs. Arms behind Tettleton at first. Gibson takes it down low. Gibson's got a couple of huge holes, one straight up the middle. Fletcher's playing way around the second baseman, playing into full. See the between short and second, and the other holes between first and second because Vaughn is staying behind the base runner, Tettleton, so he doesn't get a big jump. Two balls, two strikes, two down, two on. Gibson stays alive. He's got a piece of that changeup. <laughs> look at that look. <laughs> How'd you like that swing? Huh? Hey, Bobby, I was right on that pitch. Don't throw that to me. <laughs> Almost picked off Trammell in the on deck circle on that one. It's the old emergency swing he broke out. That fool on the changeup, but just got a piece of it. Yeah, that keeps you alive in there. 2 2 again by Bankhead. Got him on the inside corner. So Bankhead comes on, gets the strikeout against Kirk Gibson, who will chat with Tim Welke here. But they got Clemens out of there, and Detroit's got the 5-1 to one lead. Here takes us to Toronto, division-leading Blue Jays in a 4-4 game. Bottom of the sixth, Paul Molitor, the ex-brewer off Jamie Navarro, leads off the inning with his 16th homer. He has 19 hits in his last 20 games. Jack Morris is still in there. The Jays have added a run at 6-4 in the sixth inning. Let's head back to Detroit, where the Tigers lead the Red Sox. Chris, thank you. What an acquisition. Paul Molitor starting the day sixth in batting average. Getting on base, driving in runs. Having just another outstanding season. Milwaukee Brewers unable to keep Paul Molitor there. Toronto's mighty happy about that. Old adage. John Valentin stands in for any team in sports. If you stand pat, you stand still from well, season to season. They haven't laid back at all. Oh, yeah. well, getting Ricky Henderson out of the end of the waiver period. There was a lot of talk about, well, the rich get richer. But that wasn't a case of money right there. That was a good acquisition by Pat Gillick. It cost him a third of Henderson's contract and a minor league prospect. Former first round pick Steve Parsay. Basically, anybody could have come up with a similar package. What was Toronto, you, because you're with them, but what was the reaction of Ricky not getting there in a hurry? 
been taking a couple of days to show up. Well, what Cito Gasson said was he was just as soon have Ricky take the extra day and get everything behind him before he comes and not have the distraction of wondering all of his business. See, that, take that's care. why Cito's a manager, right there. <laughs> Fryman, the third baseman, puts it away. Valentin 0 for 2. He's retired. One down here in the sixth inning. What a perfect answer. Pretty good lineup. Second consecutive good outing for Bill Gullickson. First time out against the Blue Jays. Pitched into the ninth inning. Allowed just three hits and once again. Only giving up three hits. Five of the third innings. No walks. Very significant. There's a situation where a guy's not an overpowering pitcher, but he's got good command. Just 82 pitches through five and a third inning. He's really put on a clinic here pitching. Scott Fletcher single in the first inning. Fletcher got that single and then was taken off on a hit and run double play that ended up being a little bloop to first by Hatcher, which eliminated a Red Sox scoring opportunity early on in the game. And the Red Sox didn't get anybody else on until the home run by Cooper came in the fifth. And off the end of the bat, the cue shot. One ball, one strike on Fletcher. Gullickson took a little bit off of that breaking pitch and he can do the same right here and take a little more off and probably have Fletcher fooled again. We talked about the veteran pitcher Gullickson standing out there and really taking note of how the hitters are swinging at the different pitches and where they're making contact. He has really jammed it both right and left handed Cecil Fielder in foul territory and Fletcher's retired. And there are two down here in the sixth inning. He hasn't broken a lot of bats, but he's given a few bees to some hitters. Yeah, he's got the fastball in there, and it's really impressive when you think he hasn't gotten over 90 miles an hour. It's only about 88 miles an hour, but he sets it up perfectly with a mixture of off-speed pitches. Here's Billy Hatcher. See the 313 batting average that he has posted for the Red Sox. That one again popped up. Cecil Fielder coming hard. Oh, nice play! Cecil Fielder! Well, they talk about Big Daddy hitting home runs, but right there, he used his leather. Got out of the inning. Yeah, he's not worthy. Good effort by Cecil Fielder going to the warning track to close out the inning for the Tigers. Major League Baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Tiger Stadium in Detroit. First of our doubleheader on this Friday night, Gary Thorne, Juan Martinez. It was a 13-minute rain delay before we got it started, but that's all over. Cecil Fielder registering 5.2 on the Richter. Made a great play to end that inning going over towards the dugout. Teammates, fans love to see that. Alan Trammell. Scott Bankhead on in relief of Roger Clemens, who worked four plus, five runs, five hits, three home runs off Clemens. Bankhead a good job coming on with a runner on and nobody out. Didn't give anything up. Now he starts an inning for the first time. Trammell's 0 for 2. In this one. Four have been left on by the Tigers. Red Sox only one left on base. That was in the first inning. Because Gullickson doesn't put anybody on, he has faced only two overs, the minimum for six. has really solidified the position at second base. Range, smart position player. He moves around with his pitchers, knows where they're going to work him. Put himself in a perfect position to take the ground ball off Trammell's bat there. Been involved in six other assists or putouts in this game at second base. Scott Livingstone, two for two, having himself a big night. Has a seven-game hit streak, singled and scored in the third. His second home run of the season came against Clemens in the Fourth inning. 
Livingstone now has had nine hits in his last 21 at bats during this streak. And did that on the road during their last road trip. Will Zeppelin to Zepsik and right field back. Has he got another one? Zepsik's got room and hauls it in. Zepsik's mad at himself because he did a 360. That wasn't a pretty outfield play, but he found it. Yeah, he almost turned too far the wrong way. You can see him shaking his head. This ball fools him. It looks like it's going to his right, and then it hooks back over his left, and he gets back just in time to take it just before it hits the wall. Him slam the fence with his glove in disgust. It wasn't pretty, but he got the job done. Bankhead gets the first two outs here. And Chad Kruder spending a lot of time behind the plate because he's putting up some really good numbers. In fact, for Kruder, career highs and hits, doubles, home runs, and RBIs. 70 starts this season behind the plate. 47% effective in throwing out base stealers. Puts him among the top three in the league. Anytime you get over 35%, you're very, very effective. That's why Tuttleton's getting playing time as a DH and in the outfield. Coming up next, second half of our doubleheader, you'll see the Reds take on the Dodgers. Will Kevin Mitchell be there? We'll find out. Mike Piazza will be there for the Dodgers behind the plate. 21 homers for him. Mitchell's batting 356, including a 2 for 3 yesterday. It's coming up right after this one. Bat out of his hands, but he got the ball to Scott Fletcher. Who else? For the seventh time, Fletcher involved in a put out. And Bankhead retires the side in order in the sixth. And here at Tiger Stadium, we have completed six with Detroit up 5-1. On the run, and wow, he makes the catch. The Phils are losing. The Cardinals are tied with the Cubs in their game. Sosa has homered twice. Let's go back to Detroit and Gary and Buck. That hurt all the way to Detroit. Wow. And he got right up like nothing happened. Just flipped over the fence and said, I got it. Whipsaw. Philadelphia's six and a half game lead over St. Louis. Here's Mike Greenwell. A 5-1 lead here for the Detroit Tigers. We go to the seventh inning. Greenwell doubled in the first. One of the three hits of uh, Phil Gullickson. The home run by Cooper, the Red Sox only run. Greenwell, the one for two, goes to third. Travis Fryman. What a show being put on by Bill Gullickson right now. Well, this is what you call pitching. Yeah. He's not an overpowering pitcher. He knows that he has to spot his fastball and move the breaking ball around. He has started to sink the fastball on occasion. And he's pitched ahead all night long. All night long. Threw 20 pitches in the fourth inning. He's thrown 20 in the last two and a third. So Dawson decides I better take a couple here. Andre has grounded out twice to short. Ellickson going after seventh win, six and six on the year, and a 5.38 earned run average. That ERA is already a run higher than what he ended up with last year. 32,206 on hand here at Tiger Stadium for this game. Speaking of attendance, how about the Yankee fans and the show they put on for George? <laughs> Almost 200,000 for the four game series. Allen hitting off the back, no play for Cuba. He said they had to show up where he might move the team, just another one of those owners demanding. So on the day he said they wanted him to show up, they had 52,492 at Yankee Stadium. In the afternoon. There were no muggings, no robbings. No stabbings, a lot of enjoyment. If you want to read a good article on it, last week's Sports Illustrated, check out Steve Wolf from the point after of SI. Makes a real good point about Yankee Stadium, its owner, and these threats to move. Dawson did not go. Bruce Noble helping out, of course. Two balls, two strikes. and Yankees. Great rivalry now in the pennant race this year. Got him on an inside corner fastball. He thought it was 
really inside, didn't he? Well, here's another adjustment Andre Dawson has to make, the high strike in the American League. Let's watch his last pitch from Gullickson. You can see that's around the letters. It was over the plate, but Dawson felt it was up. You hear oftentimes a lot of National Leaguers talk about that high strike and how difficult it is for them to make the adjustment. Gullickson, four strikeouts now, only 39 total coming into this game of the season. Two down, nobody on. Vaughn right off the fist. There'll be no play. It's back in the seats. Vaughn's gone 0 for 2. Gary, this is something that we don't see an awful lot from veteran, from younger pitchers. Gullickson's got a comfortable lead here, and he's going strike one, strike one, strike one. Maintains that aggressive attitude, keeps the pressures on the hitter. They never get into those hitter counts. Two and zero, oh, three and one, and moves the game along to the benefit of his position players behind him. One strike delivery. Whoa, that ball off the table. Strike two. It's the curveball that Bellickson will throw, and he took something off of it. Had Ovon out in front. Watch the break down and in. That's what pitching ahead will do for you, too. Others have to swing when you're around the plate as often as Bill Gullickson has been all night. Needed the pitching wedge to get that one. Two down, base is empty. 5 1 Detroit lead. Gullickson tries it again. And bounces off the plate and the guards of Kruder. One ball, two strike count. Detroit bullpen always needs this kind of a performance because it is used unmercifully. Numbers and length. The Detroit Tigers pitching staff, 12th in the league in ERA. That one misses up high. They have only had six complete games this season. Minnesota has had one. Oakland has had Three. Two two pitch. Full count. You know, you look back at the start of the season for this Tiger starting staff, and they had an ERA under four in April. Into May, they were still just 4.15 for the month of May. But since that time, the starters have fallen off, and subsequently the relievers have really been taxed the last two and a half months. 3-2 the count, base is empty, two down. Vaughn waiting. Broken bat. Hullickson all over it. Whitaker makes the play. Side retired in order. At Tiger Stadium, Gullickson's the show, and it's stretch time. Roger Clemens got rocked by the big bats. Dan Gladden picking up his sixth home run of the season in the third inning with one on. That accounted for two runs. Kurt Gibson in the fourth inning, 419 to the upper deck, a two-run homer. A batter later, Scott Livingstone, just his second home run of the season. A solo shot. And Cecil Fielder, a little defense, just for the fun of it. It's been a Tiger kind of night. They lead it 5-1. to one. Scott Bankhead is on in relief. Of Roger Clemens. Bottom half of the seventh inning. It'll be Gladden, Whitaker, and Fryman coming up. There is Cecil. Wow. We'll wait for another beach ball to be extricated from the ballpark. Hit. Gets Gladden to pop it back to him. Got to hurry it. He's improved his play at first base, hasn't he? We've seen Mo Vaughn scoop a couple tonight, and he helps out right there. A lot of that has to do with confidence. You know, young players oftentimes don't separate defense and offense. Mo Vaughn having a big year at the plate, more confidence on the field overall. Snatch that one right out of the dirt to save Scott Bankhead a possible player. Well, this guy's done a pretty good job since coming into the ball game. He's throwing strikes. He's trying to earn something here. I mean, they've not shown a lot of confidence 
and Scott Bankhead. He'd like, obviously, he'd like to work some more, and so he's got something to prove to his skipper. And right now he's doing it. Lou Whitaker, a couple of walks. Trying to continue a six game hit streak here tonight. Bankhead misses down low for a ball. One thing about the Red Sox, they are deep in the pitching staff. A solid five man rotation. They've got depth in the bullpen. They've got so much depth, they sent their hardest thrower to the minor leagues, Ken Ryan. He got caught in the numbers game. When Yvonne Calderon came back, they had to move somebody, and Rich Hobson really didn't want to. Ryan was pitching extremely well. He's both a long man and middle reliever, and Hobson brought him in and said it was one of the toughest decisions he ever had to make, but there wasn't anything else to do unless they were going to release Joe Heskin. And they weren't ready to eat that contract. So they sent Ryan down. Taken down low for a ball. Bankhead was really the only other person on the staff that might have been moved somewhere. But as you can see from what he's doing right now, he still can give you these kinds of performances in middle relief. And the Red Sox, you know, they haven't used him much. Wanted to hang on to him for nights like this. Foul back. It'll be interesting as the Red Sox get close to the end of the month and they have to decide on their playoff roster. I bet you they figure out a way to get Ken Ryan on that potential playoff roster. He has to be on that. He has to be. Just a matter of weeks before he's back in the Red Sox uniform in London. Hobson told him that. You will be back here as soon as I can get you here. 3 2 delivery. Whitaker fights it off again. Detroit up 5 to 1 here in the bottom half of the seventh. Gary, it looks like there's going to be an awful lot of swings back and forth in this division race over the next seven weeks of the season. Even the Tigers, although they're eight and a half out at the start of play tonight, have got four teams in front of them. I get the feeling that they're going to try to scrap and claw their way back into the race. Red Sox have the best depth in the pitching staff. Their hitting has come around, put together a hot streak to draw them to within one game. Yankees don't appear like they're going anywhere. And the Blue Jays are on top. Once in a while, it looks like the Blue Jays are going to pull away, but they can't do it. Out in front of that one to right field. Put it off the end of the bat. Bob Zupsik moves in and puts it away. And Whitaker's retired two down. Let's check in with Chris. All right, Gary. Budweiser to Toronto. Buck was talking about the Jays pulling away. They're trying to hold a 7-5 lead. Bases loaded in the seventh. Danny Cox gets Bill Spires. Actually, there was one out in the inning, and they got out of trouble. Surhoff did have a homer earlier in the inning. 7-5 Toronto leading in the seventh. Don't forget, you can check out the Jays and Brewers on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Let's go back to Detroit. Gary Ford and Buck Martino. Toronto second in team batting behind New York. And they're pitching right in the middle of the pack in the American League as far as ERA is concerned. But as Buck said, they are they're a deep team. Fryman makes it up high for a ball. And some numbers. Travis Fryman has hit for the cycle a couple of weeks ago. The 11th time it's been done here at Detroit. And I was amazed to see only the 207th time in Major League history that anyone has hit for the cycle. It's not a lot, but thinking about it, that's understandable. That's one of the toughest things. It's like the triple crown when I hit for the cycle. Yeah, that triple always appears to be the most elusive of the four hits. Two others have done it this season: Mark Grace and Jay Buna. When Fryman collected his cycle. He actually had five hits. He tacked yep. on an extra double. That came against the Yankees last week. We had our first wild team stats Inc. go back and look Bob Musil of the Yankees holds the record hitting for the cycle in his career three times 21 22 and 1928 he did it no one has reached that bankhead to him and it's foul back Prime in the eighth Tiger and the first one since 1950 to hit for the cycle. Hoot Evers 
was the last to do it. September of 1950 as a Detroit player, the last Detroit Tiger to do it. Ryman doubled, homered, singled, then tripled, and then added that double in his fifth at bat. 3 2 delivery to him. Inside pitch by Bankhead. Melvin and Cooper, the third baseman, wants it. Almost overran it. But was able to reach back and haul it in. So Bankhead retires the side in order here in the seventh. Can the Red Sox get the bats going down 5 1? Budweiser to Minnesota. Yanks lead the Twins 3 2. Runner at first, nobody out. Herbeck at Pat Kelly stays with it. Watch him push it to get the force out at second, but not lock scores. Runners were at first and third. That tied the game at three. They're in the ninth. Wickman and Tappany still in there. Brewers and Jays, John Olerud with the ground out one for four, now batting 392. But the Blue Jays still have a seven to five lead in the eighth. Let's go back to Detroit. Gary Thorne and Buck Martinez. Poor guy, every at bat's being measured. <laughs> 392. <laughs> Only 392. Yeah. Zupsik leads it off for the Red Sox here in the eighth inning. He'll be followed by Cooper and the Melvin do up. Anything to try and get on against Gullickson. He's still just two over the minimum. A home run by Cooper in the fifth inning. The only Red Sox run. They've only left one on base. He's been in the strike zone all night long. Two pitches shy of the hundred mark. Last time out against Blue Jays, he took a two-hitter into the ninth inning, gave up a leadoff single. And Sparky Anderson made the move, took him out of the ball game. Tigers gave up two runs in the bottom of the ninth and lost two to one. He gave up an eight in the third innings, one run on three hits, walked two and struck out four in that last start Sunday against Toronto. Outstanding starts. Outside corner. He hasn't walked anybody. He has struck out four. And Zupsik is behind in the count. A ball and two strikes. Bill Gullickson. Overhand right there. Five strikeouts for him. Zupsik is not happy, but that sure looked like a pretty good strike. Well, you get to thinking about all the off-speed pitches Gullickson might throw to you, and then he crosses you up, comes with the fastball, right at the knees, had plenty of the plate. Simpson couldn't pull the trigger. He is piling up the strikeouts. Billy Gullickson. Five here tonight. Cooper, the home run, his eighth game in the fifth inning. Cooper's now had seven hits in 13 at bats off Gullickson. Two of them have been home runs. Gullickson has given up 16 homers this year, but he's well ahead of that 35 home run pace last year. Well ahead of it in the sense he's not going to give up that money. It's the direction he wants to go to be ahead. Sacks have lost eight of the last 11 games they've played here at Tiger Stadium. Very tough ballpark for Boston. Tower shot. Looking up into the silo. Kruder. He's got it. There are two down here in the eighth inning. Ellickson's retired 21 of the last 22 Red Sox hitters. This three game series against Boston, a chance for the Detroit Tigers. To make a move and gain on the teams in front of them. It's eight and a half. You get any further than that, even at eight and a half, you're a long way off. Any more than that, and you're in deep trouble. Bob Melvin has gone 0 for 2 tonight. Short. Alan Trammell. Dawson is making this look mighty easy. Red Sox are retired in order again. That's the home run. That's 10 in a row. Retired again by Gullickson. Russell Fielder will be leading it off in the Tiger half of the eighth.
Tiger Stadium, Detroit. Gary Thorne, Buck Martinez, Detroit up 5-1 over Boston. First game of this weekend series. And the Tigers have used the long ball. Three home runs off Roger Clemens. He's the pitcher of record in this game, going only four-plus innings. Greg Harris is the third Red Sox pitcher. 55th game of the season for Harris. A great hits to innings pitch ratio. Just 53 hits in 76 in the third innings. He worked an inning yesterday against Minnesota. Harris with an outstanding curveball. Well, here's a valuable guy out of the Sox bullpen. It's one of those people we were talking about. Cecil Fielder takes the pitch away. One ball, one strike. Fielder tied for six with Tettleton and home run. Second to Frank Thomas and RBI starting the day. Sixth and walks. Chases the off-speed breaking ball. No chance on that one. One ball and two strikes. Settling and Gibson to follow. Excuse me, Gary. You can see why Cecil Fielder is in a hitting slump right now. His body's involved in his swing, and it's really slowing his back down. Back to the breaking pitch. Started right at his ribs. Came right into the strike zone. He's not as happy as they are after that pitch. Harris starts this ball right at field and watch how it catches the inside corner. Cecil gave up on it and it broke back over the inside corner. It's been that kind of night for Cecil Field. That's easy. Biggie Tuttle and one for three coming up. Slow walk back for Cecil. Settling got his single in the fourth inning, came in ahead of Kirk Gibson. He had one of those three home runs off Roger Clemens. Good job by Scott Bankhead in relief. Three innings, no runs, one hit, no walks, and one strikeout. Now he did everything to allow his offense to get the Sox back in the game. He stranded a runner when he came in. Problem for the Red Sox continues this season, and that's getting runs on the road. Boston Red Sox only 26 and 32 on the road, and for Butch Hobson, they've won the last two games, but they were 2-1 games with outstanding pitching performances. But they have averaged a run and a half less on the road than they have at Fenway. That has to be a continuing concern for them. Well, the good thing about that is after this three-game series, they have just 21 road games left. They've got 31 home games once they get back to Fenway. Andre Dawson was saying before the game, says it's just undescribable as a player what happens at Fenway. He said the emotions that the crowd is able to generate amongst the Red Sox players, he thinks is what generates that offense at home. Well, they're 20 games over 500 at home, 35 and 15. Great record at home. Down to first base goes Tettelin with one out. I want to remind you the Brookway ATP Championship from the Jack Nicholas Sports Center in Cincinnati. Stop number seven on the IBM ATP Tour Championship Series coming up here starting Monday, 1 o'clock Eastern and 10 Pacific. We'll see it live. That's going to do it for Harris and Fossus, spot man who comes in to take on the left handers. To come on here with Gibson due up. Tanner Tony Fossus on to face Kirk Gibson. Runner on at first base, one down. Tettelin's the base runner. What a specialist Tony Fossus has been for the Red Sox. Left-handed hitters, just two for 30. Gibson takes the strike. Those two hits were bunts. Griffey and Serhoff have the only left-handed hits of Tony Fossus this season. Two bunt singles. Right-handers are hitting 348 on him. Gibson's the left-hander, and that's why he's in there right now. One down, one on. Coming up next, second half of our doubleheader, you'll see the Cincinnati Reds take on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Mike Piazza continuing 
a great season behind the plate for the Dodgers. Kevin Mitchell batting at 356. The Reds. Gibson trying to hang in, but it's tough against Bosses for a left-handed hitter. One ball, two strikes. Well, Bosses ran that ball in on Gibson's hands there. That's something you don't see an awful lot of left-handers do. Thing for Butch Hobson is he just got to make sure that he doesn't try to get too much out of Bosses and get that extra right-handed hitter out. This could be a good night for the Tigers the way things are going right now. Minnesota's tied the Yankees. Has not been able to put it away yet. Interesting point for the Blue Jays. Dwayne Ward has some shoulder problems, and he might not be available for another two or three days. Tendonitis in the shoulder. He's their big closure. Well, that gets scary when the pennant race is staring at you with a long time left to go. Bosses, the one-two delivery to Gibson. Appeared twice against Detroit this season, pitched only one inning, no runs off it. He hasn't worked more than an inning and a third. That's his longest outing, came against Seattle. He is the specialist, specialist. Way outside on Gibson. And the count's full. Three balls and two strikes. Tony Fosses is one of those guys that always has to win a job. He never has a contract. He's always a spring training invitee. Non roster player, right? <laughs> Settle him back to the bag at first. Gibson cranked his 11th homer in the fourth inning. Called out on strikes his last time up. Fossus has taken him full, three and two. No warm up. Red Sox bullpen, so Fossus is going to stay on here. Three two delivery. He got him. That's what he comes on for. Well, they've still had only two hits off him as left-handed hitters. Well, Gibson works into a full count. Look at the sidearm delivery upstairs, and he gets it by Gibson. Watch where the ball passes Gibson. That ball's by him before he takes a hack at it. Just couldn't lay off it right there at the top of the strike zone. Bosses continues to his mastery over the left handers. Now comes the problem. Now that's a different story. 348 by the right handers. Three home runs off Tony Fossus by right handed hitters. Center field by Trammell. Billy Hatcher. For the third out. Puts it away. And that will retire the side here in the eighth. Tigers leave one on. Red Sox get one more shot at it. Budweiser 2 Toronto, Brewers trailing the Jays 7-6 in the eighth. Kevin Reimer off Mike Timlin, Devon White on the run, but can't get to it. B.J. Serhoff, who has three hits in the game, comes home to tie the game at 7-all. The Orioles have won, the Yankees have lost to Minnesota, so the Blue Jays now in a tie game in the eighth. You can catch Toronto and John Olerud against the Brewers on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Olerud not only worried about hitting 400, worried about the division. Let's go back to Detroit for the Red Sox and Titans. So it is a Detroit night right now in the making. Bill Gullickson's going after his second complete game of the season and only the staff's seventh. Ernie Riles will come on to pinch hit here for John Valentin. That's because Riles has some very good numbers against Gullickson. Riles, one of those who's contributed when given the chance to play. See whether or not he can get a big inning started here. Eight for 18 with three home runs off Gullickson. I was kind of surprised he wasn't in the starting lineup tonight somewhere. Taken for a strike. Gullickson has equaled his season high in strikeouts with five in this game. He hasn't walked anybody. As you saw, he had his only complete game this season on June 11 against Toronto. Riles down to first. Plus a fielder there. Gullickson all the way over to cover. One down in the ninth. Just in case. Starkey will have Mike Kenneman ready in the bullpen. The other Detroit Tigers with complete games. Steve Bergman's got one. Doherty. Gullickson, of course. 
Mark Leiter, and Mike Moore has two. Those are the six complete games for the staff coming into this game. Scott Fletcher, single in the first inning. Gullickson is still but two over the minimum number of batters to face. He's retired 23 of the last 24 in this game. The only Red Sox runner left on base was in the first inning on Greenwell's double. The only one to come around was Cooper. He's the only runner to reach third. He did that with the home run, accounting for the only run the Red Sox have that came in the fifth. Roger Clemens, the pitcher of record, nine and seven, his record right now. Breaking balls in on Fletcher. Okay, this just shows you the importance of not walking any batters. You don't ever encourage the offense that they can get back in the ball game. Alexson has been perfect in that regard. He has been aggressive. He's pitched ahead. He had good command all night long, and he never gave the Red Sox any encouragement that they could get back into this game. And they haven't. The Red Sox continue to struggle with their offense in the road. Breaking ball, Fletcher able to stay off it. One ball, two strike count. Second half of our doubleheader coming up. The Reds taking on the Dodgers. Take the Dodger Stadium for that one. You'll see Piazza, Mitchell, and companies go at it. Joe Myers, Dave Campbell standing by for that one. Scotty fouls it back. Still a ball and two strikes. Teams will go back at it tomorrow afternoon. Danny Darwin. Sunday it'll be John Dobson. Sean Bergman's going to start on Sunday, I think. Looking at the rotation, that's been changed at the right field. And the Red Sox are down to their final out as Tuttle and hauls it in. Fletcher retired two down. The current standings in this race, which are going to be affected by tonight's games. Toronto. See, New York has lost their game. Detroit can gain some ground. Baltimore won. Detroit can gain. Toronto's in a tie game with Milwaukee right now. It's assuming the Boston loss here to the Tigers. Detroit now is in pretty good shape. Billy Hatcher 0 for 3. is going to start the game against Danny Darwin tomorrow in place of David Wells who's out with a bad elbow and then Tom Bolton and John Dobson will go on Sunday. Wells scratched from the Saturday start. He threw a little bit on the side today and said he felt pretty good after that one missed rotation. This missed turn in the rotation should be back. That's your waiting. Taken inside. Two balls and one strike. Ellickson holding the Red Sox to the one run on Scott Cooper's homer. His record would be seven and six. Clemens will go to nine and eight.